One. Good afternoon to all our viewers and a very warm welcome to the Moses Kotane Institute Friday virtual lecture. I am Sue Singh and I will be your host this afternoon. In celebration of Global Entrepreneurship Week, we'll be talking women entrepreneurs. In recent years, the study of women entrepreneurship has grown rapidly, gaining widespread acceptance amongst academics and most of all contributing to a better understanding of the variables that contribute to the difficulties of women pursuing entrepreneurial careers. Female entrepreneurs are the fastest growing type of entrepreneur in the world. According to developing literature, women can make a substantial contribution to entrepreneurial activity and the economic development by creating new employment and boosting GDP with favorable effects on poverty reduction and social development. African women have been described as a powerful and economic force who will be critical in tackling Africa's development difficulties. Gender inequalities exist in legal and macroeconomic systems, and women have fewer personal, social, and financial assets than men. African women currently make up the bulk of workers in the informal economy, with just around one third of women on the continent participating in formal economic activity. Women's participation in business is sometimes discouraged by cultural and social standards. And many aspiring female entrepreneurs lack access to helpful networks and mentors. Our guest speaker today is Dr. Marlene Modley, who is a lecturer at the Distant Education Institute, Nancosa. She has extensive experience in education, welfare, and business sectors, where she has dedicated her passions and expertise to empowering women to become financially independent. She also serves as a director of the African Dream Foundation, where she assists with public relations and training programs. Dr. Modi has a master's degree in business administration and a doctorate in marketing, amongst other national and international qualifications. She is a business advisor who is accredited by the Institute of Business Advisors of Southern Africa and the author of the book Entrepreneurship for Women, The African Dream. Her second collaboration, The African Dream Sunset Effect, launched at the Durban Book Fair in September 2021. Both publications were written to help women overcome obstacles and flourish in an increasingly challenging socio-economic environment. Over to you, Dr. Modley. Hi, Sue. Thank you very much for that warm welcome. Uh, it's really um, a delight to be here today. Thank you very much for having me here as a guest speaker. I'm just going to start my presentation. Um, so we're talking about entrepreneurship today, particularly for women and changing that narrative. So the McKinsey Global Institute report called How Advancing Women's Equality Can Add 12 Trillion to Global Growth, released in 2015, should actually be raising eyebrows for its potential to boost economies by 2025. And similar predictions uh, exist locally. Reports indicate that by 2022, female entrepreneurs have the potential to boost the South, South African econo economy by 175 billion. So that's phenomenal. So I'm going to take you through to just a little bit of background about um, our foundation and um, how this has actually prompted me to actually write this book on entrepreneurship for women. So um, the African Dream Foundation was um, uh, the brainchild of my husband, Brian Woodley, and um, the focus is poverty alleviation through financial literacy and entrepreneurship and innovation. So we set up a center and um, Medellin's Technical High School was kind enough to afford us 
a space. So we've got a huge multi-purpose room that we've converted into the um, financial literacy and entrepreneurship and innovation center. And that's based in Chatsworth in Durban. So it's fully kitted out and um, our launch was uh, in 2018. And um, we've had over 50 computers sponsored and um, we've got all mutual that has come on board uh, with the Moneyversity program. And um, you can see at the back uh, on one of the monitors, the Moneyversity program is visible. So we were trying to inculcate that entrepreneurial thread with the students at the school. And we opened it out to, to the surrounding areas and we invited the schools. We had a big launch and uh, we addressed the principals in the surrounding areas and we encouraged them to make use of the center just to uh, teach um, students. In fact, if they go through the whole module uh, on Moneyversity on the old mutual platform, they're learning um, with ease in terms of those financial concepts, financial literacy, and it, it's very interactive. So all they do is complete the quizzes and watch the videos and um, they get certificated for that. So it's an awesome platform. And unfortunately, due to um, COVID, we had to put a lid on this and we couldn't continue with our programs. But we envisage going forward that um, we will use it extensively. And I particularly want to continue with women empowering sessions and training them on entrepreneurship. And we've got a, a host of people that are willing to come, come on board and um, use, utilize their skills on, a, on a, a gratis basis and just to empower other women. So um, even the, the ladies featured in my book, they've also offered their services and um, you know they've, they've already been experienced in business and um, they want to pay it forward, so to speak. So the facilities are there and we're hoping that people will take um, advantage of this um, facility and, and just um, enroll and um, you know look out for our adverts and um, you know let us know or touch base with us on on our website and we can take this forward so in terms of um, entrepreneurship um, it entails setting up of a business uh, there's a whole lot, host of financial risks but entre entrepreneurship for women is vital you know, for its abilities to advance living standards and to generate wealth. Not only for these female entrepreneurs, but also for related businesses. And in driving that change, entrepreneurs innovate to bring new and improved products to the market. And by offering unique goods and services, they break from tradition. They improve the quality of their li of lives for their employees, their families, and potentially potentially people working in aux the the auxiliary services. The outcome is boosted morale and greater economic freedom, especially for women. Entrepreneurship for women has that domino effect of assisting women to break out of financial codependencies and to become self-sufficient. That is what I would like to see, to see many other women becoming self-sufficient. Well, in the aftermath, aftermath of apartheid, South African women, particularly previously dis disadvantaged individuals from um, Black, Indian and colored communities were actually decades behind comparative economy, economies in terms of the available resources. Apartheid resulted in vertical discrimination, essentially state-driven discrimination against individuals condoning and demanding individual and corporate favoritism on the grounds of race and gender. There were separate services for, for, for different racial groups meaning certain groups of customers received substandard amenities. They were unfair business practices and, and, and these policies were common 
um, we, through my marketing research, you know, it's it's evident that substandard goods were dumped in in rural areas. So stemming out of this, you know, we start the third decade of the 21st century and female entrepreneurs are increasingly being considered as important catalysts for economic growth and development in South Africa by contributing substantially to employment generation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Equally, they struggle with various barriers, including access to finance, financial literacy programs, training, business consulting, and socio-cultural -cult constraints. So they have a passion for what they do. They can work seven days a week. Their work is aligned to their, pur to their purpose. But um, there are lots of gaps. Um, and we find that um, while that gap is closing, the average loan size for women-owned business is still 31% less than that for male-owned businesses. And part of this discrepancy can be attributed to women being more likely to bootstrap and invest more of their savings into businesses before borrowing. However, the reality is that women generally lack the accounting skills and trade know-how affecting their ability to secure funding. And too often, they also lack the financial prowess required for their businesses to secure the momentum and get it off the ground, to keep it afloat and to grow. Understanding how to access finance, how lenders operate and what is demanded by the credit process, as well as having the right skills to balance books and maintain a healthy cash flow is essential to business. Equally, too many women lack that financial dexterity to maximize av available business tools. The skills required for income statements and balance sheets and understanding of business terminology and ratios and the essential learning about managing cash flows and supply chains, um, it's, it's, it's really lacking. So unfairly, men are also widely perceived to make better entrepreneurs than women. The historic worldview is that they are considered more able to create networks, hold higher ranking roles, and command more money. If more women had equal access to entrepreneurship opportunities and could accumulate wealth, the gender wealth gap would reduce. And South African, in the South African context, uh, there would be a positive impact um, in terms of the country's sluggish and decimated economy. The knock-on effect of this is diminishing unemployment and the potential for a growing band of role models to inspire the next generation of female entrepreneurs. And we've seen during the pandemic that people have lost their jobs and it's been a hopeless scenario. So unfortunately, too many women in business are viewed as having businesses in their name just for fronting purposes, for black economic empowerment. And that the, the real owner of the business is actually the, the husband. But there's a lot of um, successful female entrepreneurs, really, really successful. And that's what I try to showcase in, in my book. Um, and I've had the opportunity of crossing paths with some amazing women who've demonstrated outstanding resilience in business amid turbulent times. And some of them were single moms grasping at straws. Um, some of them were trying to escape poverty and um, they were trying to escape a past that they would not pass on to their children, that they could not pass on to their children. And the common denominator of all the stories and the, the cases showcased in the book um, is adversity. And we can all learn something from each one of these stories. Um, you know, there's um, Nozi Sagoni, there's Shamin Thakur Rajbansi, uh, Shamla Gavinder, 
um, Jennifer Smith, Tejas Khan, Seema Raghavar, Priscilla Gavinder, who started an NPO, and Sheetal Cross, who started um, uh, a media company, and um, Rochelle. She's now living in Amsterdam. She went across after she had a, a whole host of issues. Um, you know, she was violently assaulted. And, you know, the list goes on in terms of all that she had to endure. So she fled this country and uh, all she had was her hands. And, um, you know, she started um, an enterprise in terms of healing other people using her hands, doing massage and, and, and um, different techniques of um, uh, reflexology and homeopathy and all of those kind of treatments. And she has managed to survive all these years in, in a foreign country. And, um, you know, it, it's just, it's just um, an expose of real women that have endured real strugg struggles. And some of them have had tragic events. Some of them were like really brutally assaulted, but they've come out of those struggles and um, they were able to shine and start a little enterprise and really, really thrive and sustain themselves and their families with, with that uh, little um, enterprise. So I wanted to encourage people in, in these turbulent times that they too could start something. Even if you're working, you can. What, you know, it depends what, what you have a passion for. And um, in terms of the stories that unfold, it very easily helps you to unpack and do some introspection with the narratives, you know, and um, find your purpose. So, and this book is also interspersed and peppered with a lot of positive affirmations. And um, I know a lot of them have been using them. These, po these po positive affirmations actually charter a way for you. So, um, I'm actually pleased that I was able to get a lot of these copies sponsored and um, placed in shelters for women. And I've given free copies to some of the child welfares in the Durban and surrounding areas. And the response has been phenomenal. So if you read any one of the stories, it's bound to encourage you. However they are told, um, these stories will stay with you forever. And so it's merely inspirational women shining in the light and in the dark. So that's just a little bit about the book and that's available on my website. You can download a copy or you could purchase a hard copy. So my advice to you is if you've got a passion for something, start small, keep it simple, do some research. Is there a demand for your product? Avoid taking huge loans. Minimize the risks. Look at alternative ways of raising capital from friends and family. You can start a small office, home office. You can have um, your garage um, converted into an operations area. So look at the gap analysis. What are the gaps? Engage professionals to fill in those gaps. You might need an accountant. You might need a business advisor. Um, engage these professionals. Um, you can go on the websites. There's so many websites available and you would find lists of um, business consultants that are accredited with the with industry bodies and they will be able to assist you to get your business off the ground. So the important question, what have you got in your hands? We all have amazing talent. God has placed something very special in your hands. So it's up to you to find your purpose and, um, and just run with it. You know, um, if you can, my policy is if you can run a home, you can run a business, you can run a country. It's the same policies that apply. The same frugal, prudent and fiscal policies will apply in terms of budgeting, saving up for a rainy day, storing something in the barn, 
for later. What businesses do you want to get into? What are your skills? What are the gaps? Do you have a business advisor? So you can look that up on, on, the, on the net and you can find a list of accredited advisors. Um, there's funding opportunities available as well. Uh, you could start a little cooperative. Uh, five to six people can get together and find a, a start a co-op and maybe get into some enterprise where you can generate an income together and, do, and have a profit share. So in terms of where we are currently, um, we still need to obviously rethink together as an ecosystem because currently everything is very disjointed. Um, I know with clients that we've consulted with, um, they've all had challenges. You've got one portal where you apply for a C, do the CSD registration, and then there's another for your BE registration, and then you need to apply for funding through another organization. There's Kula, there's CEDA, there's CIFA. How about having one ecosystem, having alignment where, I mean, we, we're in this day and age now where everything can be merged seamlessly. So if you put up your information on one portal, shouldn't it be integrated seamlessly into all the other government portals, um, the funding opportunity portals, etc. So I would, as a recommendation, um, suggest that we, we, we rethink the way we are operating. Um, how, how are structures functioning currently? People don't know what grants are available for them. People don't know how to, to register their businesses. They don't know what it entails to get a, a tax clearance. So how about having information sharing on one portal, one ecosystem? So that's my simple recommendation for today. And um, I hope I've given you something to think about. And over to you, Sue. So, um, I'm not sure if there are any questions that have popped up, and I think I've gone over my time a little. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you, thank you. Um, Dr. Modley, for that. Um, no, you actually have not gone into over your time, so you're within the time constraints. Um, you speak a lot about the having your passion and doing a little bit of introspection to be able to dive deeper into that. Can you please just give us a few tips on how you would align your passion to your purpose? OK, so um, even if I look at examples in my book, you know, there were people that um, there was there was a lady who loved sewing and she loved working with garments. And there was another that loved baking and they started very small. Uh, if I look at Pages Khan, she started baking chocolates from her kitchen. And slowly she occupied a small business uh, space with her husband's premises and she employed two helpers. And, you know, it just grew and grew organically. Um, today she's exporting chocolates equivalent to the quality of Sally Williams um, nougats. You know, it's, it's actually sought after throughout the world. Um, and she's exporting to Asia and um, she's got, uh, the, the, you know, the formula for a zero sugar range and it's phenomenal, you know, and um, the di diabetics are actually all supporting her and um, it, these products are really, really first, you know, like really great quality. So, you know, having started from our own kitchen, I think, you know, just having that passion and and just knowing what you're good at. I think we all have have some skill, whether it's baking cupcakes or doing decoupage or painting, canvas painting, or whatever it is. You know, you can start small, start from home, and hone into that and grow your business. And today, just having a website can assist. You know, you can operate in a, in a virtual space. And you can be a middle person, you know, just an intermediary and just source products from one uh, entity and supply another. 
So what is the need? What are the gaps? What, are you, what is your talent? And try and hone into that and start small. Thank you. Um, anonymous asks different ships by stamina through physical and mental balance so that you can achieve your goals. But more often than not, as everyday entrepreneurs, we are not exposed to the stages of the entrepreneurial journey. Could you please identify what those journeys or those stages are? OK, so a lot of people, you know, get into business because, you know, it might have been handed over from family and they just got into the business, just started. And a lot of people lack um, the academic side and, um, you know, just trying to create that balance, you know, with practical experience and having that academia or the wisdom to to steer that business forward. It's important. So I would encourage everyone that has a business to study further, to, to do some um, entrepreneurial studies, find out um, what's available. There are plenty of short courses available. There's courses available from private institutions. Um, there's uh, courses available online like Udemy. Um, and uh, etc. So you can you can actually study on a part time basis and uh, become certificated. Um, not many people know how to market. And if I look at marketing, it's it's evolving rapidly. So it's hard to keep up with the changes. So you know, uh, um, enrolling for these online courses. Uh, there's LinkedIn learning as well. There's such a range of courses available currently. So I would encourage all entrepreneurs to stay updated um, with industry knowledge. And, um, you know, you uh, through the various seaters as well, there's training available. So use that to your advantage. Um, I'm, I'm hoping I, I've adequately addressed that question. Uh, Sue, over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Doc. So I'm um, just quickly having a look if there's any more questions. No. OK, I think we are just within our time as well. We want to thank you, Doc, for your time and sharing your inspirational stories as well as the information that you've shared with us as women entrepreneurs. And to our viewers, we thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next week as we also dive into another entrepreneurial topic. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you very much.